In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, You who are everywhere present and fill all things, Treasury of all that is good and Master of life, Come, dwell within us, Cleanse us from all stain, And save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to continue now in the Gospel of Mark. Uh, last time we took a section that goes um, from uh, chapter 8, verse 27, uh, down uh, to uh, chapter 30, I mean, verse 33, I think. No, we went down to the end, verse 34. All right, verse 34 introduces us to uh, the the teaching. No, actually, we went down to uh, chapter 9, verse 1. And that's where we're going to pick up today, chapter 9, verse 2. Um, After uh, predicting his passion and having Peter rebuke him for it, He calls Peter Satan, out of my way, Satan, because your mind is not set on the affairs of God, but on the affairs of men. And then calling a crowd to him, he gives us instruction about if anybody wants to uh, follow me, then uh, he should uh, pick up his cross and so forth. And he ends by saying, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God coming with power. And that introduces the transfiguration, even though the uh, prophecy is totally fulfilled at the resurrection. So the text begins, After six days, Jesus took Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain, privately, alone. So he took the three that he always takes, like the raising of Jairus and places like that. He takes those three. So Peter, James, and John. And he goes up to this high mountain. Tradition says that that's Mount Tabor, and there's no reason why that can't be correct, but we just have no way of knowing. And he was uh, transfigured or transformed. Um, word is in, in Greek is metamorphosis. He changed his morphe, his form, his appearance, his uh, and so forth. Uh, his garments became glistening, intensely white, such as no fuller on earth can make white. And there appeared to them Elias with Moses. And they were speaking with Jesus. So the law and the prophets are speaking with Jesus. And Jesus is radiant radiant, not only his skin, but his clothes even, as it says here. And then uh, Peter responds, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three uh, sukkot, three little huts like, um, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what he should respond, for they were terrified. And there came a cloud. See all the Sinai overtones to this. This is taking the law and filling it with the light of Christ. Um, A cloud came overshadowing her, and there came a voice from the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone, but only Jesus with them. Now, does that fulfill that prophecy in verse 1? There are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God coming in power. It does, in a way, because it's an anticipatory thing. Um, The resurrection appearances will be more of that. And then finally, Uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And there, the kingdom of God will come with power. 
Uh, so, let's look at this text now uh, closely. Jesus takes along with him Peter and James and John, and he brought them up to this high mountain alone with him. And the text says then, Ke metamorphothi, emprosenofton. He was transfigured uh, before them. And uh, his garments became glistening intensely white, such as no fuller on earth can make white. And there appeared to them Elias with Moses, and they were speaking with Jesus. That's the first part of this uh, event. huh? And so, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complete surprise uh, to the apostles. They don't expect this. And there's this radiance. It's an anticipation of that radiance that Paul speaks about in Philippians. Huh? Uh, he is going to we we believe in Jesus and we expect him to come from heaven and transform our bodies to be conformed to the body of his glory. And so, uh, which is, in other words, then it's the anticip what we have now rather, is the anticipation of Jesus' permanent state after he goes through his passion. But before that, as this text says, and it's confirmed by a, a second Peter, uh, it's 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 a it's a prophetic light which suffuses Jesus and manifests uh, his divine reality, and that's uh, what happens. You see, and that as no fuller on earth could ever do. Okay. Uh, and so then Peter says, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three sukkot. Uh, so that there's an allusion to the whole feast of sukkot. Um, the Greek word, of course, is not sukkot. Um, in, in verse 5, um, tres skinas, three tents, three dwellings. Um, he didn't know what he should respond, but they were terrified. Seeing uh, Moses and Elijah with Jesus talking with them. These are the great heroes of the past, present here now with us. And Jesus, radiant, radiant, okay? Uh, but they were terrified as you can well imagine. And there came a cloud overshadowing shadowing them, and there came a voice from the cloud, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone, but only Jesus uh, with them. Alaton hisun monon, only Jesus, or Jesus alone, with them. Uh, now, this Mark is shorter than all the others, and that's all that he tells us, you see. So, what happened? Jesus allowed the power, the beauty, the uh, elevated reality of his divinity to affect his body. Now, now this is uh, right after the Passion predictions, as I just read them to you, one of them to you anyway. Um, and now we have this uh, confirmation of their faith. And it did help. Um, and it's from this that uh, Peter in that letter says, you see, that you, uh, you do well to attend to the prophetic word. The prophetic word is always tinged with the light of the transfiguration because it's always revealing something of the divinity and 
fire and beauty of Jesus Christ. And that's what's going on. And so, uh, this text is telling us that. Um, and then there came a cloud overshadowing them, and there came a voice from the cloud, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. So, Jesus is radiant, and the Father's voice confirms, Now you see something of my Son you've never seen before. The radiance of his being. That's the way he is now forever, since the resurrection. And as Paul says in Philippians, you see, uh, our citizenship is in heaven. And it's from there that we expect the Savior who will conform our body of lowliness to be conformed to the body of his glory and so forth. Uh, there in that text in Philippians. So, um, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone, only Jesus with them. And it implied that uh, Jesus was not radiant anymore. It's just, just Jesus. And uh, that's the experience. And it was meant to confirm these three leaders, Peter, James, and John, um, it may have it to some degree. Um, certainly that's uh, what uh, First Peter talks about uh, when he talks about the, um, the prophetic word. And uh, maybe I should read that for you. Um, this is the Bible of Jerusalem. So we have confirmation. Well, I'll go a little bit further. It was not any cleverly invented myths that we were repeating when we brought you the knowledge of the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We had seen his majesty for ourselves. He was honored and glorified by God the Father when the sublime glory itself spoke to him and said, This is my Son, the Beloved. He enjoys my favor. We heard this ourselves, spoken from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have confirmation of what was said in prophecies, and you will be right to depend on prophecy and take it as a lamp for lighting a way through the dark until the dawn comes and the morning star rises in your minds. And that's the uh, building on this experience. The saints have come to understand Jesus um, through their interaction with him, and sometimes by Jesus showing them something of the radiant glory that is his forever in heaven. <laughs>